This episode is sponsored by the original Jojoba Company. I have been using Jojoba for years, and here is why. It's non-allergenic. I can use it on any client and every client without fear of an allergic reaction. It is also non-comedogenic, so it won't clog pores. So if you've got a client who is prone to acne, Jojoba is not going to cause a breakout. In fact, Jojoba can help clean out and clear the pore. It also does not stain your 100% cotton sheets, which is a really big deal for me. I want non-stinky linens. You, my friends, can get 20% bleh, twa, I was doing so good. You, my friends, can get 20% off the price of the product when you shop through our link, massagebusinessblueprint.com slash hohoba. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Massage Business Blueprint Podcast, where we help you attract more clients, make more money, and improve your quality of life. I'm Michael Reynolds. I'm Melissa Haynes. We're your hosts, and uh, we're happy to be here live, and you get what you get, as you can see, because uh, we're doing everything live, and I'm loving it. No more pre-recordings. We're just slinging it at you in real time, in real life. <laughs> A lot there going go. on here. A lot going on. <laughs> How are you, Melissa? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm just going to say straight out that I am uh, coming to you from my new treadmill desk setup. Um, and since uh, Michael has assured me that you guys can't hear the little treadmill, I'm only going at half a mile an hour. Um, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot. So if you're watching the video and you see my motion a lot, I apologize. But uh, it's working for me. So we're rolling with it. It looks kind of like you're in space because you're like kind of floating back and forth, like you're in a spaceship. <laughs> like, there's no gravity, so I kind of like. And I it. took down the art on the wall behind me. I was kind of rearranging my little space, um, so it's just like all weird white background and stuff. A few minutes ago, the sun was coming in and like shining off my forehead, so that was classy. Well, for the the small handful of people that watch live, they'll get to enjoy all those shenanigans. So. Bless their hearts. All right, what are you uh, reading or thinking about today? So today is kind of, um, I guess, a bit of a selfish episode. Uh, we are, the good news is you can just listen and be chill and know that you don't necessarily have to walk away with any to-dos. <laughs> so um, we are going to talk in our little what I've been reading. Um, uh, I've been reading stuff in our Blueprint Mastermind community. I We have started doing little 15-minute like Zoom intros with our new members for new members who want to do it. People don't have to do it. And I am having a blast like getting to meet a member, hearing a little bit about what they're about, showing them what we have in the, in the mastermind community, and then helping like direct them to whatever resource might be best for them to start with. But it's really helped me see and, you know, we've been building this stuff for years and years and years. Like I've been in this for like 10 years and, you know, we made Blueprint official, what, six, seven years ago? How old, Eli? Seven? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's been a while. <laughs> it's been eight years then? I don't know. Uh, no, seven. So um, I kind of forgot all the stuff that we've made. <laughs> like, so it's been really nice to go in and tour it. Anyhow, I wanted to take this opportunity to to make sure you know what we have just in case any of this stuff kind of interests you we have blog posts that are pre-written and uh, ready for you to edit and customize and use on your own website we have massage stock photos with a whole variety of bodies of clients and different images uh, different uh, body types for the therapists we have uh, pre-made images that also we give the Canva template. So we might have a pre-made image you can use on your social media about like self-care or something or massage for headaches. And then you can use that template to customize it to your business's colors and fonts and slap your logo on there and call it a day. But really the stuff that I want to tell you about is that um, we teach. We teach you how to build and run a sustainable massage practice. And we don't teach it in a one size fits all kind of way. So we're not going to say, here is how you network. But we are going to say, here are the variety of ways to do networking. Which one suits your style? Let's tailor one of these approaches to be right for you so it's really effective for your business. We don't sell big, here's how to run a massage package plan. Here's how to have packages that promise certain results and how to build your business based on that. Here's how to scale so that you're seeing 50 clients a week at your office and you have to hire a bunch of employees to make an income. That's not what we teach. Um, we teach you 
thoughtful, sustainable techniques to run a business that gives you a decent amount of pleasure every day and also an, a, a livable income. Michael, why don't you tell everybody what we don't do? Because you stated this really well yesterday when we were chatting. Oh, I did? Yeah, oh, you did. Okay, well, remind me if I don't say it right. So, um, well, gosh, now I gotta think what I said. Yeah, basically, <laughs> there's a lot of programs out there. I shouldn't say a lot. There's some program, programs out there we've seen that charge a lot of money and they promise lots of things. And uh, we don't do that. We think there's a lot of flashy, you know, advertising out there saying, hey, like spend thousands of dollars on our program and we will teach you how to make six figures and, you know, grow your business with all these magical, miraculous results. And um, and what we found, I'm not trying to be negative about other programs necessarily, but what we found based on feedback from members is, you know, they kind of teach similar things to what you might get in our community, but they charge a lot more for it. And it is more one size fits all and somewhat over promise. So we're very real. We're very down to earth. Uh, we're very um, practical. And, you know, we don't, uh, Alyssa in her notes are put on, you know, we don't tug in your heartstrings with a video ad saying that you're going to, you know, magically change your life with our $5,000 program. Um, so I don't think I'm saying what you said I said. So remind no, me, you what, are. How I, what I say it. Is that okay? Yeah, no, we were talking, you were like, maybe we should start doing these flashy ads and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, because I cannot imagine doing a thing where you and I are like, I'm sorry, my camera's all messed up right now, um, where you and I are like looking into the camera and saying, we know how hard it is to run a massage business and you are deserve whatever you deserve to make and blah, 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 blah. And um, we can't do that. So anyhow, I don't not, we're really not here to crap on other people. And we do refer people out to different programs when it's appropriate for them. But um, yeah, it's not glamorous. The business of running a business is not glamorous. It's not flashy, uh, but we do the best we can to make it easier and more accessible and a little more fun and a little more cozy with the support of our community. And that's pretty much what we wanted to tell you. So if you're interested, uh, yeah, it's like 20 bucks a month. Or if you're an ABMP member, I think it's like 15 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And where do people go for this information or perhaps to join for a free 30 day trial? <laughs> that would be massagebusinessblueprint.com. <laughs> yeah, it's that's a sales use weekend. And by the way, we do see results, by the way, I don't want to say like, you know, we can't promise, we can't promise results, but uh, we, every day we see stories from our members telling us, Hey, because of this office hour that I went to with Alyssa, I now kind of had this breakthrough and I'm able to kind of fix this challenge I've had. And I'm actually working through it now very well, or because of this resource I found, um, this solved an issue I was having and I'm able to, you know, change my marketing for the better and it's working better for me now, or because of this, um, interaction I had in the community, from peer support, um, this result happened that it was very positive. So we do see results. We just don't overpromise results and we have a basis in reality and practical advice. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could promise results, but we're too ethical for that. <laughs> so <laughs> anyhow, that's sure. our shtick and that's what we've been reading. And, you know, we do read our own stuff because we uh, try to update it and we direct members to the resources that work for them. And thank you for listening to this little commercial. All right. Well, with that, speaking of commercials, one of my favorite commercials is Happy Face, our next sponsor. Yeah, you and I have both gotten massages with the Happy Face face cradle, and I have one on my table because we don't hawk products that we don't approve of ourselves. We like Happy Face because it's the most comfy face cradle, so you can give the most relaxing massage of your client's life. No sinus pressure, no eye pressure, no need to adjust in the middle of massage. It's not going to smudge their eye makeup or mess up their fake lashes. It is made in the USA. It is seamless, so it's super easy to clean. And it's about the same dimensions as other face cradles, so it's going to fit your frame and fit your covers. I lost my place on this ad. Okay, you can get 20. I'm just going to fail at the very end of every one of our sponsor spots today. <laughs> you can get 20% off your entire purchase at massagebusinessblueprint.com slash happy face. You're going to use code massagebb at checkout, but all of that information is at that page, massagebusinessblueprint.com slash happy face. By the way, I want to say good morning to Marcy, who stopped by on Facebook to say good morning to us. So, Marcy, we're glad you're here. We appreciate you being uh, a viewer today. And just a reminder for those who are listening, which is most people, I know after the fact, it's much more convenient to grab the podcast on your app. But 
If you ever want to join us, uh, we do this live uh, every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And we broadcast that on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So if you're on any of those platforms and you want to look at us and post comments and questions and kind of follow along live, uh, you're welcome to do that. So Marcy, good morning. Thanks for joining us. we got a couple of people joining us live, three people joining us live today. I would like to say good morning to Marcy and her new dog, Canelo, which I learned means cinnamon, which perfectly describes this beautiful dog. Mm. That's lovely. How well we know our people. I know his new dog. <laughs> What's our topic right. today, Michael? Uh, yeah, we're going to do a check-in on our three words. So at the end slash beginning of every year, we do a three words exercise. Should I go ahead and just kind of do a quick recap of what it is first? Would that be useful? All right, I'll do that. So um, so we do a three words exercise that was created by Chris Brogan, who is an author, business consultant, speaker, who Alyssa and I both, uh, like he and his partner, Rob Hatch, run a company where they do consulting and um, insights and we really kind of like their style and Chris Brogan came up with a three words exercise many years ago and the theme in general is instead of making New Year's resolutions or setting you know kind of uh, rigid goals um, he finds it useful to define three words as a theme for the year and those words are more guiding principles to help you with specific aspects of your life and business throughout the year so they're not like smart goals or like set in stone kind of milestones they're more like I said, guiding principles, themes to kind of align your energy towards. So we do this every year. And uh, at the halfway point of every year, we like to do a check-in to see how we're doing. So that is what we're going to do today. And Alyssa, I think you are going to go first. And you muted I'm, yourself. There we go. Now Sorry, I had a little trouble with the mute button. And I did a good <laughs> job of muting before I coughed today. Well so, done. So, yeah. So I had kind of like a a three pillared approach, which makes sense for three words. My overarching concept was build. And I wanted to, and I do want to build my business, my body and my brain this year. And I was trying to take, um, you know, different, different aspects are going to take priority at different points of the year. So um, yeah, so my business, the goal was to one, increase my massage practice a little bit, um, I came back from the pandemic part-time and have not increased to full-time yet. Um, and still I'm not going to, I'm limited by a few different factors right now, but um, I am delighted to report that with just minimal effort, um, my schedule is a little more full again. Um, I've taken a handful of new clients, which has been really nerve wracking, but also really good. I took a lymphatic drainage class, which I am going to, I've got a, I got, I'm a very slow learner, so I need to do a lot more practicing before I start um, advertising and recruiting new lymphatic clients, but um, I feel really good about that. So I'm, I'm feeling okay about how my massage practice is going. I um, also noted that I really want to do more building of my little side business, doing websites and getting other small businesses started with their marketing. Um, I have done almost nothing to do that, but part of that is because I'm already working with a company that has a lot of work for me right now, and that is probably going to be limited to the next six to 12 months. So um, I'm just going to put my head down and do that work and forgive myself for not doing more to build right now. So that's my business stuff. My body stuff, I... Um, you know, in general, wanted to start taking care of myself a little more, which uh, I've done some good things. I've been getting more massage. Um, I got this treadmill desk and I've been doing more walking in general. I have not been great about doing my at-home physical therapy and my shoulder is kicking up and that's limiting my massage. So I am committing right now. Please ask me about it next week, but I'm committing right now to calling um, and making some physical therapy appointments for the summer so I can get back on track because I do want to physically be able to do this work for another 10 years or so. So I feel okay about that stuff. Meh. And I, oh, I start yoga. I tried to do yoga in the spring because it's outdoors and then the, it got all messed up and didn't happen. So, um, I start yoga next week and I'll have at least like 16 to 18 weeks before the outdoor yoga shuts down for the winter. So yay. Um, and then my brain. I was doing some at-home neurofeedback to work on my concentration and just in general, uh, my mindfulness levels and my volatility of my patients. And that went and has gone pretty well. I finished that up because I wasn't progressing. I kind of plateaued and I was like, okay, I'm good. Um, but I am doing more reading and less mindless scrolling. And the second part of that was like, I really needed to work on 
building and reinitiating relationships and friendships and stuff. And I've done a mediocre job at that. But, um, but you know, I, I also am just going to be okay with that because pandemic limitations. So I'm still not comfortable being indoors unmasked with people. Um, and I still have a lot of clients who are medically vulnerable. So I'm not going to start getting riskier now. So that's where I am. I've done an, I give myself three out of five stars for building my business, my body, and my brain. I've made progress on each. I have more progress to make on each. That's where I'm at. As always, shooting for mediocre. <laughs> well, I don't have as much visibility into your business or body, but I will say um, regarding brain, I have noticed um, changes um, so that align with your efforts and your desires um, on the brain side of things. So um, from a a third party view or objective view, I have noticed um, changes that I think you um, are looking for. So I just want to kind of validate that and um, reinforce that, I suppose. So congratulations on the efforts you've made. It's and I always love nice, uh, always yeah. nice to get validation that I am becoming less of an a-hole. <laughs> That's not exactly what I said. <laughs> I know I'm teasing you, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hey, we're all a work in progress. Um, I love the alliteration business body brain. It's just fun to say. So, Hey, I want to jump in with, um, Leslie's comment, um, before we move into your words, because Leslie says, uh, I don't think I even did three words this year, but it's been the most successful business year yet. Imagine if I'd been focused, you know, Leslie, we're all doing the best we can. And I'm going to out Leslie right now. Leslie's our friend who is running the COVID conscious massage practice in a not very COVID conscious area of Florida and kicking butt and taking names. And I have, I've taken a lot of inspiration and comfort from how Leslie has rebooted her practice and, um, I really appreciate that a lot. So Leslie, sometimes, you know, less is more and clearly that's working for you. Right on. All right. So my three words this year uh, have been deep, level and fortify. So the, uh, the word deep was meant to align my energy toward going deeper into uh, skills, uh, certifications, experience, learning, um, things I'm already very focused on. Uh, by the way, I'll, I'll back up one level and say that all of these words, I didn't really have an overarching theme, kind of like Alyssa said, like build was kind of the theme. But my, I guess if I could assign a theme, it is to uh, polish and optimize and kind of um, add some uh, some productive restraint to some things already in motion for me. Um, and so I have a tendency as an entrepreneur and a fairly creative person to always chase after shiny things. Like I want to start a new business. I want to try this new thing. I want to like, I'm always trying to explore new things and learn new things. And that can be a strength in some ways, but it can also end up being a distraction. So my goal was to reduce the distraction element. And so the word deep was, uh, was a theme around going deeper into the initiatives I'm already working on. So for Alyssa and I, you know, going deeper into building up massage business blueprint with, you know, better resources, better communication to communicate the value to people, um, really um, strengthening the foundation we've already built. Uh, for my financial advisory business, um, going deeper into experience and skills and certifications I'm already uh, working on and really developing more, uh, more depth of skill and experience in those areas. So I would give myself four out of five in this. Uh, I feel like I've I'm going to go with Alyssa's star analogy or star rating system here, but I'll say four out of five. I think I've done a pretty good job. I think I could do better, but I think I've stayed fairly well focused and avoided shiny things and instead work on depth as opposed to uh, quantity of, of skills and projects and things like that. Next word, level. Uh, I'm going to give myself five out of five on this. Um, level was meant to um, help me work on a sense of calm and not letting emotions rule my actions. Um, one, and in fact, I had a great experience this morning. A great example happened just this morning before we started recording this podcast episode. Um, and it is um, the theme of people being wrong on the internet. So I kind of use the people being wrong on the internet as my barometer of how well I'm doing. Because it used to be if someone was wrong on the internet, I would get all fired up. I'd have to argue with, I'd be like, oh, they're big jerks. And like, I would just get all bent out of shape. Or if someone like insulted me on the internet or whatever, uh, in real life too, but you know, this stuff happens on the internet mainly. So that was my barometer of like how worked up I would get and how much I would let it take up, you know, space in my head rent free or so forth. So 
now um, I had an experience this morning in a forum with other financial advisors where someone was kind of being insulting and misreading what I was saying and like totally being inappropriate and, and unfair. And instead of getting fired up, I, I first of all, I just kind of like, you know, walked away for a little bit, came back. And then I said, no, actually, you misunderstood me. Here's why. Uh, I understand this forum is not great for getting context. I know you didn't mean to be insulting and kind of left at that. And it all just went out fine. He was like, yeah, we worked out fine. And I diffused it by um, being rational and friendly as opposed to getting all worked up. And, you know, in the past, uh, in real life as well, I would let emotions kind of take over too much and uh, react. And I think I've done a, a really great job of addressing that. Um, you know, some therapy has helped, some just introspection, um, just really being observant about my reactions. And I'm really happy with how I've um, leveled out my um, intention around you know, reactions and how I react to things. So I'm going to give myself five out of five on this one. doesn't happen very often, but I'm pretty happy. I think that that's really impressive. Thanks. So people are still wrong on the internet, but I'm letting it roll off. <laughs> um, and in real life. Uh, fortify is my third word. Uh, and that was um, chosen because I want to it's a little similar to D, but also some differences has some elements of uh, physical exercise, you know, kind of continuing my exercise program, strengthening my body, strengthening my mind, um, fortifying my businesses, uh, working on making small iterative improvements. Again, my instinct is to make big sweeping changes and, you know, totally reinvent things every six months. And that can sometimes be distracting. So I would much rather make small iterative improvements and work toward gradual strengthening of business projects and business processes, um, you know, my own exercise programs, um, stuff in my family life. I, I, for me, I think small iterative changes work really well for me. So uh, I'm gonna give myself four out of five for that um, as well. So I think overall I've done pretty well and I'm pretty happy with the direction I've gone with my three words. So that is where I am. I think that's really great. I'm like, it's fun to watch. And um, I really like, I have liked what, I like the approach of like going deeper and also like making small iterative changes is a good way to put it uh, to, oh. yeah, to our businesses to improve them. Yeah. So rock on, I think we're doing okay. We're doing okay indeed. I and agree. I want to hear from our listeners if some of you did three words um, and, you know, if now you're thinking about how you're doing on them or you have completely forgotten them since the first week in January and are going to reboot, let us know. I want to know about your progress. Email us at podcast at massagebusinessblueprint.com. Right on. All right. Well, we do have a quick tip or two, but first let's give a shout out to our friends at ABMP. Indeed, ABMP is a longtime sponsor of the Massage Business Blueprint podcast, and we super duper appreciate them. I think in the topic of being um, introspective and thoughtful, uh, I want to note that ABMP has a fantastic massage and bodywork magazine that always gives me something to think about and something to improve on or just something to meander through regarding my massage career and practice. It is an award-winning magazine included in print for ABMP members and also available free to everyone at massageandbodyworkdigital.com. We have a Blueprint for Success column and we're really proud of it. We think we're bring some uh, useful business information to the world every couple of months with this. Um, there's a lot of other columns. There's a fantastic ethics piece. Always, there's always Ruth Warner's pathology column. We think it's just a really great publication. It is a professional journal, indeed, that includes techniques, in-depth features, video tie-ins, which are super helpful. And it's gonna cover all the issues that matter to professional body workers. Hey, that's you, that's me. We can always use a little extra education and info. You can learn more at massageandbodyworkdigital.com. And uh, you know, ABMP, thanks for being a sponsor. Thanks, ABMP. All right, quick tips. I have something to share if you like. I have one too, but you go first because I haven't fully th th thought mine through yet. All right. Well, you got 30 seconds left. Through right. on the fly. <laughs> so um, this is from an article in the New York Times. Uh, it's an opinion piece by David Brooks, and it's called The Greatest Life Hacks in the World for Now. 
I know it's an over the top clickbaity title or whatever, but it has some cool stuff in it. And one of them I think applies to our listenership because we're always not always we're we're frequently focusing on things like, hey, generate content for your massage practice and you know, blogging and you know, educating your audience can be very useful in your marketing strategy. And I noticed myself included, a lot of us get really stuck on writing because we're like, oh, writing, I've got to make this perfect piece and I can't, I don't know where to start. And writing is just a big kind of mental block for a lot of us. Um, and the, uh, the tip was when you're beginning a writing project, give yourself permission to write badly. You can't fix it until it's down on paper. I love this. I, I agree with this hundred percent. Um, write something, even if it's bad, because it's much easier to go edit and polish it up and fine tune it and fix it later once it's on paper or in a document or wherever it's going to live. Uh, but you can't do that until there's something written. So go ahead and write badly. It's okay to start writing something badly and then fix it later. That's often the, the best way to, to get it done. This is what Anne Handley, uh, she's a marketer, um, actually with the tiny house office just north of Boston. Um, she uh, calls it the ugly first draft. She's got a great book called Everybody Writes. And uh, she's going to be a new edition coming out in the fall that I'm really excited about. Um, but I literally, since I started calling it the ugly first draft, it actually takes a lot of pressure off. And I follow a lot of writers on Twitter. And the best piece of advice is exactly what you said. Like, once you get something down, you can edit it and make it good. But you cannot edit a blank page. Uh -huh. So, and and for me, a lot of times that just means putting things in bullet points or outline form. The sentences often don't come until later, or the total opposite, and I just blah, all the sentences, and then I have to pull it apart, which is fine. Once you write it down, you can edit it. Yeah. And it's it's a good piece of advice, and it's good to hear it in a lot of different ways from a lot of different people. Right on. So yay. So my quick tip, um, it's been rattling around in my head, is that uh, and it's a lot like Michael's uh, not getting involved with people who are wrong online. Um, I am learning and I had to like consciously make this decision recently to just be okay with being the villain in someone else's story. Tell just me be more. cool with it someone in the situation is going to think you're wrong. There's nothing that you can do to convince them that of your intent or of the, uh, you know, interpretation of the outcome. And you're just going to have to be okay with someone thinking that you are a villain. And, you know, other people get to be villains in your stories. So, let it go and walk away, my friend. Be the villain. And, you know, maybe cackle a little bit. I really do try to, like, embrace this in my stepmotherhood when, like, obvious absurd things come back to kick me in the ass because I'm the stepmother and I just literally cackle. And on the Disney app, I make my my little account profile an evil stepmother and just embrace it and roll with it. I'm going to be the villain. Maybe and, get a hairless cat to stroke and a monocle. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, yeah. Just, just, you know, learn to... It's, it's easier said than done. It's going to take me a long time to work through it. Uh, but yeah, if you can be okay with the villain in someone else's story, you're going to have a lot of energy to devote to things that are actually important. Look at us growing as humans. Uh-huh. Giving out psych advice. You know, my my dream, and I when I was hanging out with Janine, um, one of our premium members who I took the lymphatic class with, um, we decided, <laughs> Janine and I decided we should have a a podcast that's just like advice, like people just send in random questions about business or life or families or relationships or kids or we're like, we should just have like an ask us podcast. Um, and then I can just throw out these little uh, superficial bits of information and pretend that I'm actually skilled. So there you go. There's definitely a precedent. What's that column that used to be in newspapers? Ask somebody. Dear Abby? Dear Abby. Yes. Dear Abby. Yeah. yeah. That's still yeah. around. Is it still around? Yeah. There's, um, I think it's like run now by, um, like a grandchild or something like that. Okay. The Emily awesome. Post etiquette family, that's all still in the family too. It's actually run by a grandson who is just a delight, absolute huh. delight. And he is gay and was like really instrumental in moving the family towards like, and, and they were always pretty inclusive anyhow and accepting anyhow, but like, um, yeah, they're really like hip with how etiquette applies to social stuff today. Anyhow. A lot of sidebars today. Hope you stuck, stuck with us. It's 30 minutes. You did good. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, we should probably wrap it up there while we're, I shouldn't say ahead, but at least okay. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. We appreciate you being a listener as always. We already kind of gave you a little spiel about uh, Blueprint Mastermind, but I'll do one more quick one. That's at massagebusinessblueprint.com and click on the community um, call to action on the homepage or look it up in the menu and it'll tell you all about the Blueprint Mastermind community, what you can expect out of it. And again, you can join free for 30 days um, so you can try it out and see if you like it. So with that, as always, we appreciate you being a listener. Uh, you can email us at podcast at massagebusinessblueprint.com if you have questions, comments, or feedback. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.